What's going on guys? Alex here with the Fastlane car. And that right there is the 2019 Kia Niro EV. That's right, it's all electric. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what it's like to live with an electric car. I'm gonna take this out on the road, see how the different drive modes work, see how the autonomy is, see how the regeneration works. Then I'll take you through all the screens, all the settings, all the tech that makes this Nero EV different from the regular Nero and really any gas powered car for that matter. And then at the end of this video, I will show you how this Nero EV charges. That's all coming up right now. Before I head out on the road, I just wanna give you a little walk around of the car. Now the Nero EV starts at $38,500. That is before any tax credits, keep that in mind. And it comes in two trims, the EX and the EX Premium. This is of course the EX Premium. So I have the Monroney right in the passenger seat right here. Let's take a look. And there you can see 2019 Nero EV EX Premium. This of course is snow white pearl with a charcoal interior. And with some options, we are at $47,155. So not the cheapest Nero but I do like this white color. It's very pearly, looks really good. And being the EV, you do of course have these blue accents up front right here. There's a look at the back. The blue carries in on the corners right here. We have the Eco Electric badge. Blue stitching on the steering wheel. Blue piping and stitching on the seats and even the little perforations, it's kind of hard to tell, but inside of those is actually a little shade of blue. And of course, up on the dash, eco electric badge and blue trim around the air vents. All right, let's take a look under the hood. The Nero EV is front wheel drive and uses a single permanent magnet synchronous motor, makes 201 horsepower, 291 pound feet of torque, and it is powered by a 64 kilowatt hour or 180 amp hour battery. That battery is a liquid cooled lithium ion polymer battery. And there is a battery heater available as an option for cold climates, which this Nero EV does have. And that's probably a good thing since we are in Colorado. According to Kia, the Nero EV will get to a top speed of 104 miles per hour and will go from zero to 60 in 7.8 seconds. All right, time to get on the road. You'll notice that our start button does not say engine start stop, it says power. So they're thinking of everything here. Put on the brake, press that. It'll go through a system check and then tell us we're ready to drive. You can see that green car symbol with the arrow. That is actually telling us that the virtual engine sound system is functioning properly. So this car could be completely silent from the outside, but it's not. It kind of sounds like something super futuristic, like a spaceship from the outside, and that's intentional. Kia made it so this car makes a little bit of sound. That way pedestrians are aware outside that you're moving the car. It's basically a safety feature. So let's take a listen, see what this car sounds like from the outside. One of the biggest differences between the Nero EV and the Nero that you notice right away, right when you get in the car and start to go for a drive, is the center console area is completely different in the Nero EV. It's kind of hollowed out here. We have a little bit of storage down here. And instead of the classic pullback transmission, we have a rotary dial. So park in the middle and then spin to the left for reverse. The middle is neutral and over to the right is drive. The other thing you'll notice that's different about the Nero EV, which you can probably see right now, is the cluster. It, of course, is fully digital. There's no tachometer because instead we have all of our battery and range information on that left display. But I'll jump more in depth into that when we get inside and go over all the tech in this car. The Nero EV is direct drive. There's a gear reduction unit, so there's no typical transmission or any kind of belt drive system, which means you get really quick acceleration, 
an instantaneous torque. It's really fun to drive. I'm cruising down the highway right now, both hands on the steering wheel, and I can feel paddle shifters behind each one of my hands. And that feels very familiar to a bunch of gas-powered cars I've been in where you change gears with the paddles. These don't change the gears though because the Nero EV doesn't have any gears. Instead, these paddles are for the regenerative braking system, obviously something you're not going to see in a gas-powered car. And I really like how this system works. There's four different levels. I'm in level three right now, which is the strongest. You can go down to level two, one, or zero, which is completely off. And in level zero, you accelerate, let off the, the gas pedal, and you're just gonna keep coasting and keep coasting. It's gonna take a really long time for the car to come to a stop. Now, hit the left paddle, we'll go into level one, and this feels like a standard gas-powered car with a regular amount of engine braking. It doesn't feel like the brakes are being applied, but it feels like I'm slowing down. Tap it twice, go into level three. I don't have my foot on the brake at all, and it's coming to a stop on its own. The maximum amount of regeneration is going back into the battery right now and I really don't need to touch the brake pedal until I want to come to a complete stop, which is right now, and now we're stopped. There's also an auto regen feature, so it will use the sensors in the front of the car to automatically adjust the level of regeneration depending on what's in front of you. So if a car pulls in front of you and let's say you have adaptive cruise control on, it will automatically go up a level in regeneration so that it's saving power while also slowing you down. It's really neat. Now the regen system is effective, but it's not necessarily the smoothest regen system. The levels are just a little far off from each other. Level three is way stronger than level two, which is way stronger than level one. You never know quite what level you should be in, and sometimes the levels are just a little too strong or not strong enough for what kind of driving you're doing. The Nero EV has four different drive modes and they're all controlled with the drive mode button down here in the center console. Right now I'm in normal, that's of course for normal everyday driving. You can switch it into sport, everything becomes a little more responsive, a little quicker. Then we have eco mode, which limits the speed to 65 miles per hour. So I'm doing a little over 65 right now. If I put it into eco mode, it will start beeping until it gets down to 65 miles an hour, letting you know you're going too fast for that mode. And then of course, once I'm in eco, I can hold down and that will put it in eco plus, which further limits the speed to 60 miles per hour and brings you down to that speed. You can override it if you floor it, but it's gonna give you all kinds of chimes and start screaming at you. Eco Plus also reduces the effectiveness of the climate control system, which again, is going to help you get better range out of this car if you're not working that system as hard. There's a pretty good set of autonomous features. Over here on the left, we have controls for the blind spot monitoring system. We also have lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control. Adaptive cruise control is set, so is lane keep assist. I've got both hands off of the steering wheel. Steering wheel icon is green down there. It just lost the lanes. Once in a while, it has a hard time reading the lane position or reading the lines in the roads, but when it works, it works pretty well. It keeps you very centered in the lane and doesn't do the ping-ponging back and forth that a lot of other systems tend to do. It is important to note that this is not a hands-off system. I was able to take my hands off of the wheel for about 10 seconds before it reminded me to take control again, but Kia does not recommend doing this, and neither do I. I told you we would take a closer look at the cluster, so here we are. All the way on the left side, that shows the battery as a percentage. So right now we are less than half and kind of works like a fuel meter. As you get dangerously low, it turns red. Now over on this side, you can see power and charge. So as you accelerate, that's gonna move up this way into the power. And as you use regenerative braking, it's gonna dip back into the charge section right there. Over on the right side, there's a digital speedometer. And then we have this cool digital display in the middle. So right now that's showing consumption info. There's also a few different trip computers, but this is where it gets really interesting. It actually breaks down your driving style. So there's economical, normal, and aggressive. And it basically tells you 
how much time you're spending driving the car in each of these ways. Now the infotainment screen in the Nero EV is way different from anything you would find in the regular Nero or any gas powered car. And that's because we have so many options, a bunch of different map features that help us drive this car a little easier and with a little more peace of mind. So down here we have this EV button. And if I push that, it will bring up our EV menu. And inside of here, I can click on our range map. So right now it's showing 103 miles of range remaining. And there's a visual display of where we can make it off of the current charge level. Now, if we hit this list button, it will show you all of the current charging stations near your current position, or if you have a route plugged in, you can do it near your destination or along your route, a couple other options there. But basically it tells you what direction it's in, how far it is, the name of it, the address, and you can click on them and it will tell you there is one 120 volt charger at this station and one 240 volt charger at this station. Here we have our energy information screen and that's giving us a battery in a percentage, which is pretty cool. So not only do you have a graph and the mileage indicator, you can also see the exact percentage over here. Now, if you go into that screen, it's gonna tell you that we have 103 miles of range remaining, but if we do it without climate, we can squeeze an extra mile out of that. And of course, 39% battery. Now, if you go into that, it breaks everything down for you. It'll show you what parts of the car are using what amounts of power. So right now, drivetrain's not using anything, climate's not using anything. The electronic is using about 0.3 kilowatts to keep everything running in here, including the screen, the cluster, everything along those lines. And of course, battery care is the battery heater, and that's not doing anything right now. It shows you the instant usage and as well as the cumulative. So since you turned the ignition on, and we can see that the electronics have used about 81% of the power used and climate 19. Now it will also tell you your DC and AC charging rates. So yes, this does support DC fast charging up to 100 kilowatts using the CCS combo plug. So it's telling us that it will take about 34 minutes to get from where we are now to 80% charge, which will give us 222 miles of range. We can go in there and adjust the cap level for the charging. So right now it's set to 80% to help preserve the battery. We can do the same thing with the AC chargers and set them to a different limit. And that's telling us that 240, it will take three hours and 25 minutes. And on 120, it's gonna take 19 hours and 30 minutes just to get up to 70%. Now we also have this eco driving screen, which will show you your carbon dioxide reduction, which is pretty cool. It basically tells you how much you're saving the planet and makes you feel really good about driving around in your Nero EV. You also have EV economy history where it logs all of your trips on mileage and average consumption. So you can go through and see exactly how efficient you were on each one of your trips. Here's the charge management screen. So in this charging and climate section right here, we can set a scheduled departure. So right now I have it set up every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 7 a.m. the car is gonna be ready to go. So. When I get home from work, I can plug this in in my garage and then basically it will do the math for me and make sure that the next morning at 7 a.m. the car is ready to go. That's pretty cool. You can do the same thing with climate as well. So not only can you set the battery to a certain level every day, you can tell the car to be 70 degrees every single day when it's time for you to get inside and head off to work. We also have location-based charging, so we can enable that. And then you can do things like change the charging current for the location you're at. So maximum, reduced, or minimum. Lastly, on the center screen, we have EV settings. So like I said, this does have the cold weather package. So there is a winter mode. Having that on will reduce the driving range, but will help protect the battery in cold climates. There's also a range warning. So enabling that will let you know when you plug in a destination of the GPS and you don't have enough range to get there, it will let you know, hey, you need to stop at a charger or you're not gonna make it. We also have EV route and that does kind of the same thing. It basically will gray out any part of your navigation where you don't have the range to get there. So it'll be blue just like normal in your available range, but when it thinks you're gonna die, it will switch over to a gray line, letting you know you have to hit a charging station before you get to the end of that blue line.
The front end of the Nero EV looks different than the regular Nero because no air needs to be able to pass through this front grille. So they were able to make this entire piece solid and put the charge port up front, which is really cool. You can pull straight into charging stations and plug right in. On top, we have our AC charger and on the bottom, we have the DC fast charger. According to the owner's manual, using this AC level two charger, you can get to 100% in about nine hours and 35 minutes. Now, like I said, we do have the DC fast charger. So at 100 kilowatts, about 54 minutes to get from empty to 80% and 50 kilowatts, about 75 minutes from empty to 80% charge. And over here on the left side of the steering wheel, there's two buttons that are specific to that charge port up front. So first we have an off button for scheduled charging. So let's say you have scheduled charging set up, you pull into your garage, and you plug it in, but you want it to charge right away. You, maybe you're going out later that day, you need some more juice in the car, and you don't want it to wait till the next morning. Before you get out, just hit that, scheduled charging will turn off, and then you can plug in the car, it will start charging immediately. We also have an auto lock for that charge port up front, which is really cool. So normally, when you put the charger in and then lock the car and walk away, the charger locks in there so no one can pull it out, which is neat, but, you can turn this auto lock feature on. So when that light is lit up, it will still lock the charger into that front port. But once the car reaches its full charge, then it will unlock that so that someone else can come take the charger and plug it into their car. Really smart and that way you're not hogging up a charger, but you still make sure you get your full charge without someone messing with your car. The Nero EV also does not come with an at-home trickle charger. So that would be something that you plug into your standard outlet at home just like that. And that's because it will take about 59 hours at room temperature to charge it up using a trickle charger. That's insanely long. So it's really not recommended unless you can't charge anywhere else and need some emergency charge into your Nero EV. As you can probably tell, there are a lot of differences between this Nero EV and the regular Nero, especially when it comes to the tech inside. And that's pretty standard across the board for all EVs. They work differently than internal combustion engines. There's different tech needed to make them run and make you as a driver understand how these things function. So I hope this gave you a little bit of insight into what kind of tech we might see in some electric cars in the future. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to go back to the fastlanecar.com for more news, views, and EV reviews. Catch you in the next one.